Welcome back to Redacted Media, where we bring you the content as long as you mind your business. Before we get started, I'd like you guys to go ahead and like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on any uh, podcast service, go ahead and follow. You can also rate us on five stars, both on Apple Podcasts and Spotify now. I am your co-host, Redacted or Alarmer. I'm joined by Jake. I'm the baby, you gotta love me. He's the baby, you gotta love him. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, breaking down the third book in Stephen King's Magnum Opus, The Dark Tower. That's all the cool kids say. And uh, we're on our second episode. But first, I want to say that I posed a question last week to Jake via text that what characters in King Universe, maybe just in Dark Tower, because I don't know if you've read, could lift uh, Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, right? Right. And did you have any answers to that? So um, my immediate thought was like, nobody yet, but like, you know, All of our only, characters are flawed, very yeah, much only, so. We're only seeing the beginning of their journey. Mm-hmm. Sure. But I'm thinking, like, who could have, like, the potential? And uh, and maybe this is just me, like, being a, a big fanboy for this character. I like, know what you're going to say. Yeah, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I could see, like, maybe Eddie um, having the potential eventually. Okay. Jake. Yeah, for sure. Uh, never Roland. No, definitely Never not. Roland. Probably not Susanna, just because yeah. of what uh, Detta yeah. had been doing. So, Okay. Yeah, I I ended up pitching this to uh, kind of the people that inspired this podcast, uh, Dark Tower Palaver. They're two guys that do basically what we're doing, but they do it in like 20-page increments. It's fucking insane. They've been going for like six years, and they're like 100 pages in front of us. (laughs) It's nuts. They don't do this every time, but they have book clubs, and they have like round tables where they just kind of bullshit about like King stuff. And I pitched it to them, and they brought it up. And uh, have you ever seen the movie The Green Mile? A long time ago, yeah. John Coffey, the, uh, the, the prisoner. Uh, that's King Book, if you didn't know. Yeah. So that was like the resounding answer, I think. Like, probably one of the only perfect characters King's ever made. I can absolutely see that. Yeah. I think that was probably my first like King movie or book. Like, yeah. Green Mile. It's it's a fantastic movie. Oh, it's so good. Tom Hanks kills it. Yeah. <laughs> I, l- I love Tom Hanks, though. He's my favorite actor. So <laughs> anything he's in, I'm like, yeah, Tom, Tommy. I like that guy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you guys want to think of any other characters that might be able to carry... Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, like, and I want you to be. They have to be able to pass up to scrutiny, and I think that's also kind of something that we can give to King's writing that he doesn't make Supermans. Yeah, you know, sure. even one of his most powerful char- characters, which I believe is Roland Deschain, has many flaws. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know, <laughs> he's not a great guy at all, and he's missing fingers now physically. So, yeah. <laughs> so he couldn't lift the hammer. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the the, uh, the podcast I was listening to was getting into like the semantics about would the hammer be too heavy for a baby to lift? Like, what is the actual weight of the hammer? Right. Yeah. And I, be, I believe canonically it's like fifty pounds. They even if you have the if you have the uh, what's the charm that Odin puts on it? Fucking like the. Um, shit, somebody it's deemed worthy, to be worthy or yeah, something. Yeah. Power of Thor. Yeah. And it was like, you ever seen a Pet Cemetery? No, actually. <laughs> it's a fucking insane movie, right? The Big Bad is like an 18 month year old oh, that comes back from the dead. Okay. And his name's Gage, and he's fucking terrifying in the movie. Like, he cuts this dude's fucking Achilles tendon with a scalpel. It's fucking nuts. Jesus. And so, like, I was like, nah, Gage could do it, man. He's perfect. He's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a little baby with fucking Mjolnir holding it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, that would be that would be fantastic. But I wanted to bring this up because they talked about it on their podcast, and I'm probably going to clip them talking about me and like because they're like mentioning me on Twitter because that's one that uh that did it. That's gonna that'd be one of my intros, right? Yeah. I have an intro for like Joe and I's podcast about like uh, Michael Scott says like by the way, what does redacted mean? Yeah. You know, like just shit like that, and they're like, no, this guy's. His name is redacted on Twitter. Like, no, that's his actual name. They're like, well, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm so like that. That little creativity flame just sparked me whenever they said, "Oh my god, I could use that." I'm that's just gonna awesome. clip it on my computer. That's mine now. You know. That's fun. I like that. <laughs> and I think that having a little intro to any type of podcast is just kind of fun. I'd probably yeah. go a little bit overboard on Joe and I's podcast because it's like 45 seconds long and there's music and there's like 18 clips. It's just like <laughs> I had fun doing it, so I did it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Look out for that in the future. Maybe uh, maybe you've seen this intro from the last three episodes because I haven't put out one of them fucking ever. But <laughs> hopefully by the time you're hearing this real time, I have an intro to the podcast. So Hell yeah. let's get into the book. All right. <laughs> we left uh, Eddie 
Roland and Susanna, and we jump over to Jake Chambers, who is dead, but not dead. Yeah, you know, a little, little column A, a little column B. Yeah, for sure. A little uh, Venn diagram. You know, you got dead on one side and not dead. You got Jake right in the middle. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so we are back in New York City with Jake. He is, uh, you know, he's got basically like two voices in his head yelling at him, like, you're alive, you're dead. And he's trying to fight the madness that he feels growing inside mm-hmm. him. And it's close to the end of the school year. It's been maybe about a month, month and a half or so since he was supposed to die. Mm-hmm. And um, he's just sitting in class one day and you know, thinking about his, his death. <laughs> yeah, wild, right? right. That, that's like... Well, also, I want to get to, like, the storytelling aspect of it. When the fuck do we pick up on this? Because they jump back and forth in time about four times yeah. in this little passage. So are we on the day of the English exam? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's when we jump into him. That's, that's and then, the, the present. The, okay. The day of the English then he exam. goes back to, like, even before that, and then kind of goes up to it again, then goes back again. It's it's kind of wild to keep track, because I remember hearing, like, three weeks in here a couple of times. You said, like, the month and a half, but I kind of also feel that was said in here somewhere. Yeah, um, he, he does do, you know, King loves his flashbacks. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, and no warning. Yeah. It just happens, just like, oh, and, and also this happened, and I was talking to this girl, and she just sometimes calls me Bama, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> the stream of consciousness that right. the, the, the teacher talks about Jake being good at, it's like King kind of isn't great at. <laughs> he just puts stuff out, like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, go ahead. and speaking of English class, you know, he is sitting in English about to – turn in an essay called My Understanding of Truth. And he didn't remember writing this thing. Yeah. What a <laughs> weird... That's such a provocative question to ask 11-year-olds. I, I, always, I, I, I keep forgetting how young Jake is. He, he has the mind of like a 20-year-old. Right. But he, they keep Dying on, will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. He's lived two lives. No, he's like 22. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's at this school, and I wonder, before we got, the Piper School, it's a private school that he got into, right? And his yep. father, quote, put it, the best damn school in the country for a boy your age, all capitalized, proper down status. I enjoy that in just storytelling, whenever things that are repeated often like that in somebody's life can kind of take that uh, that form of, of, that's what the school is called, you know? Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that, just in the, the formatting of this. And that's that, that writing nerd shit that I really do enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jake's dad kind of goes wild about that. Like He uh, he loves the fact that Jake is in the school. Not because it's going to be good for Jake, but because it looks good. Yeah. It's it's impressive. I think if we don't get down to it, his dad probably had Jake because he needed to have a kid. Probably, yeah. You know? It, it would be weird for him to not. Yeah, why, why don't you and the missus not have a kid? Yeah, what's, right. going, on? what's going on with you? Yeah. yeah. He's definitely keeping up appearances, and he's a wild... Just character of oh, absolutely. How I couldn't imagine being Jake and growing up with this kind of family, you know? Oh God, I feel bad for the kid. Yeah, we have because we just break that down right now. That what is who his dad is, you know? This the, we go into that, right? Yeah, uh, we we get <laughs> actual interactions with his dad later on for sure. I guess we can we can hold it until then. Um, but as he's sitting there in class, he um, you know, he looks over and he sees, um. What he knows is like the door to a cloakroom, and um, but he he feels this like compulsion to go and open it because he's like, I know I'm gonna open that and it's gonna be the role in the world. Mm-hmm. And so of course he he gets out of his seat and he goes up and like opens the door. Mm-hmm. And nope, it's just the cloakroom inside. Like it's exactly what it should be. Yeah, and. Uh, just like, what are you doing? Go sit down. Yeah, and that starts where King starts to tell us about Jake's like fascination with doors. Yeah, ever since he died, he has become very fascinated with doors and like trying to open them because he's convinced he'll go to Roland's world whenever he does. Which is kind of strange because the Jake that we know in the Gunslinger it sh- is all the information that Jake has because he dies there, you yeah. know, and he doesn't know anything about doors just yet. Yeah. We do, yeah. As, as readers, was that dramatic or uh, is that dramatic irony? Where we know more than the reader does. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. 
I should know this and be an English teacher. Right? <laughs> but yeah, uh, I wanted to point out a point where uh, he's talking about, before he gets, even gets into class, he's uh, talking about just that he's going to open open a door and find himself back into where he was. And that it was this place that he awakened after dying. Because that's how he, he knows, like, as these memories are coming back, this is where I went after dying. And there was a quote in here that said, At first he had believed himself to be in hell. And when the man in black in the hooded robe came along, he had been sure of it. That sentence captures the whole feeling of book one to me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, what the fuck is going on? Who is this guy? This is some kind of, like, supernatural place you know that and that it had to be something like hell or a port a purgatory that we had explored in the first book you know we didn't yeah. know what is going on here so i want to at least bring that up because it was a uh, it struck me like oh yeah that's exactly how i felt reading the gunslinger i, I like that a lot mm -hmm. um and so he um Interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. I, I saw another one on, on, on this. It's an 11-year-old, right? Period, period one was English comp, English comp. He had an essay to write at home between 1,500 and 4,000 words. The fuck 11-year-old is writing 4,000 words <laughs> for a fucking essay. Right. There is not a way. There's no chance. There's no chance that that's yeah. happening. Even 1,500 is a lot for an 11-year-old. Yeah. Like, what the? 1500 is a lot for me. Yeah, that's that's a a good essay size. Like yeah. that's multiple multiple pages. Even do, even single space, that's multiple pages, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> it might be a uh, king just being a writer and be like, "Oh, yeah, 4000 words ain't nothing." You know? Yeah, that's a short story. <laughs> but no, I I know even in college classes right now in an English degree, having a 4000 word minimum, never seen it. Yeah. It's, the most I've seen is like six pages double spaced. That's the biggest assignment I've had. And it and they gave us like three months to do. Yeah, <laughs> I did it in a week, but you know that's just because that's how I write. <laughs> I procrastinate. <laughs> but sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say he he gets down to his seat and uh, starts looking at the essay that he's about to have to turn in. And um, oh, it's very interesting. It it's not an essay at all. It's kind of a poem. Yeah, definitely. It's um. I wrote it all out, but it's gonna be that's too long, and you know, get in trouble. But uh, he he talks about like the gunslinger is the truth. He kind of goes through all the different characters and says they are the truth. Mm -hmm. um, everything that happened to him is the truth. Um, at one point, he says like Roland let him die, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Roland let me die, um, but he still loves him. That is the truth. Yeah, and uh, then he <laughs> he puts in that joke. When is the door not a door? It's a jar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's fitting, but also very weird. Very weird, right? It, especially at this point. And later on in the chapter, it makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. But at this point, it's like, what the f <laughs> What the hell is going on here? With this poem, I also, King does this a lot by quoting things in the beginning of his stories. And I guess Jake just automatically, how the fuck did you quote things in the 60s? Did you just know things? Right. Or you had an encyclopedia laying around. How the fuck does he... I mean, maybe he has it. The first quote, I will show you fear in a handful of dust. T.S. Butch Elliot. I've never heard T.S. Elliot called Butch either. Yeah. And exactly. they do the same thing with Robert Browning. I've never heard Robert Browning called Robert Sundance Browning. I don't huh. know what this is about. Maybe it's an inside joke with... Yeah. Quoting, I have no idea. But yeah, he, he quotes T.S. Elliot and Robert Browning at 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a very verbose eleven-year-old. I mean, okay, <laughs> he's a well-read eleven-year-old. I mean, yeah. they even say that uh, what's the his dad? I think says he like he gobbles up literature or something like that later in the chapter. Yeah, so at least they kind of established it, but it's still it's surprising. Still, yeah, it's absolutely. still surprising that I mean, Robert Robert Browning isn't like the craziest of poets, but like some of his stuff, like yeah, I could take. A mature person to appreciate it. You know, you're not going to appreciate it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also throws some pictures in here. Um, so one mm -hmm. of them, he's got like the leaning tower and he's like colored it in where it's all black. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, which the tower. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, and, that's what it's in reference yeah. to for sure. Yeah. Um, and it kind of made me think of like, 
Eddie's description of the tower because, like, when he saw it, saw it, he, you know, saw like the kind of spiraling up mm-hmm. it. And uh, doesn't the Leaning Tower have some bells behind it? I believe it spirals, yeah. yeah. I've also, never been, so. also, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is the second um, mention of that particular tower. Yeah. Most, most famous tower in the world, right? Right. I mean, I think so. You can't say the Apple Tower is, it's a tower. Yeah, in name, but yeah, it's not really a tower. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to ask, what did you think about Blaine is the truth? Blaine is the truth. It's repetition here with a character unnamed so far. Yeah. I was like, okay, so that's, that's foreshadowing for somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who Blaine is yet, but. Solid name. Got to yeah. be like a Pokemon gym leader or something, you know? <laughs> I think there is. I think there is one. <laughs> I think that's the fire gym in uh, the first game. Is it Blaine? It's a yeah. solid name. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like the, the old man who has your answer trivia questions. His gym is Hold like... on to that thought, save it, wrap it up till we're at the end of the book, because I got a lot to say. Oh, if shit. that's the fucking case, that's wild. Okay. So, yeah, like like if if I'm thinking of it correctly, in, in Pokemon red and red and blue. So um, you go you go Brock, Misty, Electric Guy. Is this like the fourth one? Um, so I think Blaine is like sixth or seventh. He's close to the end. You have okay. to go to Cinnabar Island. Blaine sounds right. He has a uh not Growlithe, but the Evolve version. Arcanine, yeah. Yeah, he has one of the. I remember that. Yeah. I think it is fucking Blaine. Because his gym is set up where, like, there's a door where you have to answer, like, a, a, a trivia question about Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, if you get it right, you can go to the next room without fighting a trainer. Mm-hmm. If you get it wrong, you have to fight. Um, hmm. I'm pretty sure. That's also been, like, a decade since I played. Gen 1. So. Oh, for sure, yeah. I got Fire Red upstairs. I'm going to poke it in tonight. Hell yeah. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pokemon side quest. <laughs> Little tangents there. So we had we had Blaine that was mentioned. Then also, something about a train. Which, I mean, you guys know, cover the book has a train yeah. on it. Choo Choo, obviously. So something's going to be happening with this damn train. Yep. We don't know what's going on. But uh, he, he, he is just disgusted by this essay like oh yeah he's freaking out too he's like he's like they're gonna know i'm crazy it's not even gonna be a question of like oh jake's been acting weird they're gonna be like no jake needs to go to an asylum yeah get locked up yeah strange i'll come back to that later yeah i'll talk about that later (laughs) (laughs) um yeah he, he he talked about like getting locked up yeah multiple times like they're gonna ship him off because he's gone kooky yeah um and so he's like, "Hey, is it okay if I step out for a minute?" Because no one, no one takes a dump at Piper's yeah, school. Yeah, no, no one goes to the bathroom at the school. They're too fancy to go to the bathroom. Yeah, they step well, out for a minute. The bells are ring by hand. What the fuck is that? Is it like a like a boxing? <laughs> <laughs> ding ding! Who <laughs> gets class? <laughs> so, somebody's just sitting there, like, like, uh, like those bells at a farm. They're just like. <laughs> <laughs> it it must be something about the times of w- when Jake lives. You know, they're yeah. so much different than ours. I'm like, what the fuck does a school bell look like? If you're ringing it by hand, I mean that yeah, that's really weird. I'm betting they are like a a, a boxing bell where they just have like a hammer that hits probably yeah. quickly. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah. So he he leaves the classroom and. Um, you know, the little section ends with being like, and he never saw Miss Avery's classroom again. That's a king trope. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. never see it again. Wow. That's his last day of school. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so as he's like walking through the school, he is like arguing internally with himself about whether or not he died still. And he hears Roland's voice come to mm-hmm. him and tell him like, you're not crazy. Um, you're just, you know, you're lost and scared. And, you have to find your way back home. Mm-hmm. And uh, this had me wondering, you know, is is he just imagining something that, like, he's, like you know, is he just imagining Roland's voice right now? Or, you know, Roland's also, at the same time, kind of losing it. I wonder if there's some sort of, like, shining connection between them or, you know, Ka. Yeah. Like, maybe Roland didn't even realize that he's actually speaking to Jake, but maybe he is. Well, I think it's kind of important to see how do you feel that Jake's memories are presently. I think that he was with Roland for a short amount of time in Midworld, I think, is the desert, right? Mm-hmm. And 
does Jake Prime, who we have now, does he have all of those memories now? Does he re- remember Roland's voice? Does he remember? I think so, because he, he talks about, like, uh, later on, about, like, how everything, like, for a while was happening simultaneously. Yeah. Like, uh, I, go ahead. <laughs> it's not it's not about that. I, I got a joke afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, like, in a few sections, we'll get to him, like, remembering um, the death. Yeah. And then after that, he, like, you know, he's, like, walking forward, but he also remembers like i'm also laying there on the ground and he's kind of like you know it's almost like you know if he was in a tv show like half the screen would be showing what's going on half the screen would be showing what he'd already seen Mm -hmm. and like he's kind of like living both realities at the same time yeah that'd be really cool to see like maybe a like a phantom image of what should have happened yeah and then like right next to what did happen like that blue cadillac would become a phantom whenever it stops, but the real one would keep going, and his body would be the phantom there. You know, they could do some really cool camera works with this. Yeah, like really, and they could just record both scenes and like you know put the other one at, like fifty percent transparency mm-hmm. over it or something yeah. like that. Just like that would be awesome. That'd be a really cool effect to have done and kind of show that splitting of Jake's mind and what's happening. Yeah, my joke was <laughs> that Roland seems to have these instances of people talking to him in his head too, and you brought up the fact that it might be Ka or the Shine, whatever it may be, and I thought, could Court be a Force Ghost for Roland? <laughs> oh, that could be cool. <laughs> but I don't want it to be like cool like in Star Wars. I want it to be really weird like in Happy Gilmore, where it's like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> just giant alley court and like a slow mutant. Just, just leading, leading, rolling on. Good job, buddy. <laughs> oh my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> like it's stupid. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So <laughs> back to it. <laughs> so um, Jake is walking to the bathroom. Yeah. He, uh, he actually first reached it. For like the girl restroom door, mm-hmm. and he he opens it and like, as a girl is walking out, she's like, "Hey, what the hell?" And he's like, "Oh, sorry, wrong door. I thought it was the desert." <laughs> Which, like, out of context, like, just imagine being the girl being like, "What are you talking <laughs> are you about? Talking the about desert, it? the desert." And so just like imagining that out of context, just a kid being like, "Sorry, I thought it was the desert." <laughs> like, I died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake's uh, he's definitely going through it presently as he's walking out of this uh, th- at at a class and <laughs> I, eventually yeah he eventually just leaves school th- yeah. he goes into the the boys bathroom and there's nothing there too right yeah Is, do we like jump back in time after that I forget um at the ne- start of the next section yeah okay yeah he, oh yeah so he just it happened three weeks earlier so we jump back and we and we go into what Jake remembers for that day before he gets killed or not killed. And his recall of details is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I always love in books whenever like uh it's like, oh it's told in first person, I'm writing you this story at the end of my quest and da 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 da, right? How much they fucking remember. Right. Like these per- no way. <laughs> Every book protagonist has photographic memory like, and they're all great writers because some of them oh, oh, yeah. I, I never wrote before in my life you know i failed english class da 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 but here i am using fucking oxford commas and yeah. beautiful you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm amazing i know how to use a semicolon but no uh <laughs> i wonder wonder if it was like this is maybe a ramping up of his uh memory through the hypnosis that roland put him under yeah because he was able to completely recall okay yeah that'd be that. kind of yeah. cool I was kind of giving King some leeway here. Like, okay, this this point here, he's remembering, like, the uh, the hot dog guy that's going to chug a yoo and what was in the lady's purse, you know, all these little things that uh, he should have no right to remember, even if he was just struck by a car, you know? Yeah. So. Um, but what's really cool about the scene is that, like, even though we know what's going to happen and we know, like, the ending, he's still able to, like, drum up suspense oh man that what what do you say like 2500 seconds yeah so like the whole time he's like doing a countdown being like in 1500 seconds this will happen uh then this guy does this and then it's gonna happen in 1200 seconds Mm -hmm. and uh you know the whole way he's like he's walking along the street on his way to school 
Um, and everything that happens, like he's like, I've already seen this before. And so he's like predicting it as he's walking. And also he's like, I'm going to get hit by a car and die. Mm -hmm. And I can't make my feet go any other direction. Yeah. He felt like he's he like was a passenger in his own body. Strange. Cause we've had instances of people being passengers in their own body yeah. in this series so far. And that kind of makes me think of like the what fate can be for characters in a book, you know? That if there are predestined paths, you know, it could be in real life too. But if there are predestined paths and you are trying to avoid that, like what could cause you to not get off the path, you know? I probably never read another eleven twenty two sixty three by King. It's a great one. He's going back to stop JFK's assassination. Yeah. But the guy that does it, he goes back in time and time like quote unquote fights back. Like the day when in Dallas, like there's like a massive storm, like only in his neighborhood that like knocks down trees and shit, so he couldn't drive through it. There's like electrical wires going down, like how fate does not want you to change it. Like, no, this is what's supposed to happen. Yeah. And if you try to go against it, then like the butterfly effect in the universe, just random shit starts happening. It's like, no, you're not supposed to be here. Or Loki, you know, like the TVA. It's kind of like yeah. that kind of thing, you know? So, but these are more like just nature fighting back against you or the universe. I can't think of, uh, any particular examples but like there's a trope um in in me media where like people know their destiny and their fate and like they they try so hard to avoid it but then like trying to avoid it causes it to happen whenever that happens i'm just like ah, chef's kiss i love that our guy oedipus you you read oedipus ever it's a old yeah. old old yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's the one where he fortune teller tells his dad that his his son is gonna kill him and Marry his wife, and so I send the kid out of the desert. He's supposed to die. Ends up becoming a prince for another town. Comes back, conquers their land, kills his dad, <laughs> marries his then mom because he doesn't know who she is. Yeah. So like, fulfilling the prophecy by intervening. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm a sucker for that. I love, oh, awesome. I love that. Yeah. Every time. Because if you would have never known, you wouldn't have done what you did. Right. But it was in your cards to always know and then to do what you did. So you can't you can't skirt fate like ever. That's really. It's a it's a gut punch when when reading or watching something like oh my god yeah they they were doomed from the start <laughs> you know <laughs> um yeah so he, he's walking up to the crosswalk and um, he's like here comes that that car it's about to hit me I'm about to step forward and it's gonna run me over mm -hmm. and like he feels himself kind of like lean forward a little bit but then this uh, dude with the boombox just like grabs his shoulder and he's like hey little buddy what the fuck you doing what are you doing man <laughs> Whoa, hey, settle yeah. down. Like, like his body was in such a, like, oh, this is what's going to happen. And, like, yeah. it was ready. And then he finally got to have control back, you know, and he got he got intervened by the guy with the boombox and was able to not be pushed. And uh, the man in black was not there, and Mort was not there. How, whoever we, we decide this is. I mean, I don't know yeah. if there's a great – was Mort the one who pushed him? Finally. I think – Ultimately, I, I I feel like probably it was it had to be more like even the, the if, priest get up does not seem like Mort's bag. That's my right. That's my one thing that's and, messing with me. And like kind of what I'm thinking is that it was Mort, but the man in black was using him, mm -hmm. and so maybe like Jake saw the man in black mm -hmm. in Mort's body. Yeah, but it, like it wasn't actually him. Okay. Um, I don't know. I still feel like by Roland taking Mort out is what caused this. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's that's how, how I choose to believe it. But, like, the day – it was weird that King threw that wrench in there, like the day that Roland jumped into his body. If that could have just been the same exact moment. Right. That, oh, I know this wasn't really the day. No, make it, make it the day. Right. Like Yeah, yeah. but if, if, if it was in a TV, it would be the same day. Yeah, for you sure. Know, they, they wouldn't add this whole extra layer in there. That really serves no purpose besides – confusing us you know yeah um and so he um when once nothing happens he like his mind kind of like splits he's two boys now mm -hmm. you know he's, he's alive and he's dead he is on the ground bleeding out from the car and he's also walking across the street going to school mm -hmm. um and like from that moment on he is like experiencing these two realities concurrently. Yeah. I I was 
I don't know why I expected that whenever this happened, he would just then be like hit with all the memories like right away. Yeah. But like to be experiencing them in real time and forging memories of your own, almost like living two lives, you know? Yeah. For the short period of time that he was alive. I believe it's under three weeks that he dies in Roland's world before we catch up with him in English class. Yeah. Um, and, and it does say that like the memories have repeated mm-hmm. um, at some point. So yeah. yeah, all of their journey together was less than three weeks. Makes sense. Or or times different over there too. That know? too. Yeah. And I always explain it that way that maybe he experiences the memories and comes back at two yeah. times speed, you know? Yeah. Um so he he goes to school, tries to convince himself like it's not real, I'm just imagining this. Uh, but he can't let it go because mm-hmm. while he's at school he's also in the desert. Um the hen that's in the desert has like you know discovered the pump and gotten water at this point, um, and you know he see Jake in class sees the world around him sees the class around him, but at the same time he sees the desert around mm-hmm. him, and I was like, God, that's so trippy. I don't even know like you can't even really imagine it. That'd be another really cool film trick if they yeah. could fade in and out, but like hit him in the same position, like he'd be the one constant. Yeah, that'd be yeah, be another really cool film trick they could do with this. That would be just batshit crazy. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and he, he's he's going, and it's cool for us to think about it. But I'm not, I don't envy the kid. He's no, he's going through not. it bad. And I'm wondering if Roland is kind of going through the same thing. You know, right? This this um this whole chapter really made me feel like. This is why he didn't show as much of Roland's perspective mm-hmm. in the last chapter. Because if we got this twice, it would feel boring. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, that's why most of chapter one from Eddie was from Eddie's perspective. Yeah. Um, and kept us out of Roland's head. And so now that we're reading this, we're like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's what was happening to him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, been, he's been struggling for a while because we don't, we don't even know how long. I imagine it's been months on Roland's side since yeah. since the I mean oh god since Jake died, well he probably didn't experience it then since he saved him more in door three. Probably months though. I mean they've yeah, all it's made been months clothes. since the end yeah. of the second book. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so and- Jake gets out and he goes back home. I love that. They start off uh, section seven with his mother and father didn't notice anything was wrong with him. His father didn't even get home until nine thirty, and that was fine by Jake. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, I'm <laughs> sorry, kid. You have such a bad life. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, like he's in his room and he hears these like two voices in his head arguing, basically, you know, mm-hmm. and he knows they're both right, and um, he's just like he's begging them to both shut up. Mm-hmm. And this is when he gets his first instance of like seeing a door. And I need to go through there because mm-hmm. he uh, he looks up to like his bathroom door and it's like like something clicks for him. He's like, I know that that other world will be through that door if I just go through it right now. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's still just his bathroom. Yeah, and I, like that just adds another level to the like feeling of crazy that he must have because he's not just like, oh, maybe that world will be there. Every time he opens the door, he has like a hundred percent certainty. This is the one. This like, is... like you know, I want to flip over my tablet here, and the back's going to be black. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Like, that's how certain he is. Yeah, and it's not. Uh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Uh, he's splitting in, in more more ways than one for a kid that hasn't had... Can't be in the best spot mentally. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> Even before this. I don't think... He, he probably had some things to, to work through, and he's... He has no one to turn to. I think he he refers to everybody he knows as an acquaintance. Yeah. Instead of a friend, you know. Like the closest thing he has to a friend is the housekeeper. Which they even get to later on this chapter. It's just a job to her. Yeah. She. I don't even think she really cares for Jake. She's just like, it's a job. You, yeah. You're the master's son. You know. Yep. And yeah, it's uh depressing as shit. <laughs> and this little kid struggles so far. And uh, so we snap back to the present, and uh, Jake's, you know, he's out of school now. He's walking down the street. Uh, his mind is just like, his head just hurts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's feeling the splitting pain as he's walking down the street. Um, and he's like, man, I just love school. Everybody's going to read that essay. There's not just going to be a few people who know I'm crazy. 
Everybody's moving on very fast. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, well, my feet will take me to work. Let's go. Like, Basically, just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Just keep on walking. And he, he runs up on these guys playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this was so strange to me. Like, what is going on? I was, I was racking my brain for, like, do these names many th- mean anything? Does the game of tic-tac-toe mean anything? Like, should I be... Is this in here? Wait, what should I be reason? paying attention to? Yes. Now? And I, I can't... Did you have anything? Because I, I have nothing. No, else. not really. Other than, like... Um, it kind of shows, like... Um, Jake relaxing a little bit, like, talking to somebody. Because mm-hmm. he, he kind of jokes around with the guys a little bit. Not a whole lot, but, like... He has, like, a, friend, like a jovial conversation with them. Mm-hmm. And then after he walks away from them and stops talking to them he realizes like hey those voices in my head are gone maybe that's what's showing is that like people here are all right they don't seem to be tradi- i mean i think that even today we have a we're small town kansas guys right <laughs> the big yeah. city oh they're all assholes there nobody likes each other it's just crime and crime and da 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 right yeah so maybe that's to show that maybe new york uh, this spot this little pocket that he's now walked into People are happy enough just to be playing tic tac toe. Yeah, I you know, so. and that they were comfortable enough just to talk to Jake, and you know, they didn't just kind of. No one's interacted with him in the streets so far. I don't even think that like anybody's asked him why a kid isn't in school. Right. Uh, first of all, they're in school May thirty first. That's late as shit. Dude, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's four days until the end of school is what he says, but I'm still like, real late in the June third is or June fourth is crazy long to go to school. Yeah. I don't want to be in school in June. <laughs> like, and then you just be for July, and then you go back to the end of August. Like, they probably started later, I think. I think that that's yeah, what has been happening. I don't know. But yeah, uh, so he, he, the voices stop. And no real explanation given just yet. Yeah. Um, so, he kind of like, he didn't give an explanation for it, but the way he kind of imagines it, is like two guys sitting in an apartment, um, arguing about something. And then a parade passes on the street outside. So they stop arguing, go walk up to the window and look at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, well, what is the parade? And how long is it going to last? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Why am I distracted right now? Yeah. And can I make it last longer? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> can I get a little break? A brief respite, por favor. Um, but as he's walking and kind of thinking about this, the word white comes to him. And he's like, it's the white. Mm-hmm. Um, the coming of the white. Like yelled at one point. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, yeah. sure. There's no real reason for us to understand what that means right now. I mean, yeah. I think there's a lot of things to a fantasy novel about good yeah, and know, bad, and white is probably the power of good, the yeah. power of light. Yeah, whiteness, rightness. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> that feels like something I'd write. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The whiteness. The rightness. Oh, God. Um, but he's like, and so now that he's like recognized the whiteness, <laughs> he's following, he's like, he's, it's, he feels like it's leading him in a direction. So he's following the sense of whiteness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time he talks about the whiteness, it, it made me laugh. If it was better defined. Right. If Roland was like, oh, we fought on the side of white to keep the darkness from the world, or da-da-da-da-da, you know? Right. Yeah, darkness doesn't exist. It's just the absence of white. Uh, whatever. They could they could have done something really cool with that. Yeah. But to just throw it in here, in our world, Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's so hard to believe shit in New York City. Right. If, if I'm out in the fucking desert, cool, the white, yeah, cool, what's the white, what's that about? You know, yeah. we got a fucking crow that talks, we got this guy, whatever. The white, cool, no. In New York, it feels weird. Yeah, especially with, like, you know, whiteness and brightness. <laughs> Please nobody clip that. <laughs> oh, God. God. <laughs> I think of you. Yeah. God, we need a disclaimer in this. We're not talking about racial whiteness. We're talking about fantasy book epic not writing persons of color. <laughs> um, but <laughs> eventually it leads them to a bookstore. Yeah. The coolest bookstore. You like it? I thought it was very cool. Yeah. So it's a bookstore that is like themed like like a 1950s malt shop. Yeah. Like all the book sections are like 
you know, I didn't write any oh, I got examples you. down. Yeah. Dumb, but it, like, you know, they're all like, you know, food, like kind of puns and stuff. Yeah. And like, he has like a little coffee bar, like, like a diner would have. And the re- the place is called like the restaurant of the mind or something. Yeah. Manhattan's restaurant of the mind. On oh my God, a, on, I want to go there. <laughs> on the sign outside, it says, Fresh from Florida, fresh boiled John D. McDonald. From Mississippi, pan fried William Faulkner. And from California, hard boiled Raymond Chandler. <laughs> it's like, I was like, that's this so is, cool. That's this, specials. That's so cheesy. I love it. <laughs> so he goes he goes in and he ends up meeting a, a pretty, pretty weird guy. <laughs> I like him, though. Yeah, he's, he's fun. I, a lot of people in. Like Dark Tower spaces don't like Mr. Tower, yeah. which is another tower. Oh my god! Yeah, like the guy. I can't remember his first name, but his Calvin. last name is Tower. Yeah, Calvin. Calvin Tower. Calvin Tower. Yeah, and a lot of people don't like him because he's kind of weird. But I, I that's really why guy. I liked him exactly. Like, he owns a library. He's gonna be a little strange. He's, 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 he's fun. He's yeah. just he's just a nerd. Yeah, like, this guy is just a, a nerd who runs a business. Like yeah. Um. Oh, I guess before that he finds some books. So I guess you can. Yeah, he's like looking at the, like the children's section. Um, he picks up a book called Charlie the Choo Choo, and um, a book of riddles called Riddle Dee Dum, mm-hmm. which was kind of like you know lobstrosity a little bit. Maybe think of those. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> like, you know, um, just the the dead tum, dead tum, really dumb. Dead tum, dead tum, riddle tum. Um. And he's like, then, then this is when Calvin Tower walked up to him. And he's like, oh, Hyperborean warrior or wanderer. Yeah. What are you doing here today? <laughs> like, he's just he's just kind of teasing Jake the whole time about yeah. not being in school. But, mm-hmm. like, in a way that shows he doesn't really care either. No. He's, like, just giving him a hard time for the fun of it. I think if you have somebody skipping school to go look at books, you're like, okay. Right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And it's like, really, what what am I gonna do? Like, call the police and be like, "Hey, I've got a truant kid here." Yeah. No. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Um. And so you know, he kind of jokes around with Jake a little bit. He's he's being really weird, but like in a way that is just kind of endearing. He's he's just a fucking dork. Yeah, he is. He he really is. <laughs> um, and you know he he's playing chess with um a guy that's sitting at the coffee bar and um. You know, he they're kind of talking with Jake and like, hey, do you want to, you want a cup of coffee? Watch him play chess for a little bit. Um, Jake kind of gets a weird vibe because the guy's a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's he's strange, but he's very. It's like the the people that are just kind of weird and dorks, but have no understanding that they are. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Just no filter. That's just who they are and unabashed about what they say and how they act. And I, I can appreciate it, especially as a character like this. I, I, I enjoy Calvin Tower. If I went to if I went to this bookstore and was greeted by this guy, I'd be like, I don't know how to interact with you, <laughs> but I am fascinated by you. I'm going to sit down and watch you guys play chess at least yeah. just to hear the weird shit that y'all are going to say. I right. Mean, they're, they're like... They're like Star Wars or Star Trek nerds, but with literature, and they're just quoting random shit, you know. And they're like, oh my god, it's amazing! Like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> uh, like, like I would, just, I would be fascinated. Like, yeah, great. Um, but he says non, pays for the books, and leaves. Uh, he takes about two steps out of the store before he decides to start looking at the books. Mm-hmm. Um, he starts looking through the riddle book first, and it kind of has like an introduction about how like riddles are. One of the oldest games in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, talks about how they've even been like in the Bible. He gives like a um, riddle that like Samson gave to some, some dudes. Out of the eater come forth meat, and out of the strong come forth sweetness. And uh, they tried to like figure it out, but they couldn't. So um, Samson's wife Delilah told them the answer so that they could you know, tell Samson. Mm-hmm. And when he found out, they got the answer from her instead of figuring it out. Dude flipped shits and killed them. Yeah. Is that is that like the Bible way of saying that his wife cheated on him? Like, it huh. seems kind of strange that Samson would just kill people for knowing the answer to a riddle. But maybe also, olden days, you know, riddles held a little more value. Um, That's a good... That very well could be. Because is, is Samson... 
It's been a while since I've been in church, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Same sure. the guy you cut his hair and he Yeah. He becomes weak, right? And he's yep. the one that uh God, hallelujah sings about him. <laughs> we were actually talking about him uh with the jawbone thing um weeks oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were, weren't we? What the fuck were we saying? Um I think it was when like we were imagining the first jawbone, like I was like, Oh, I kinda thought it was like bigger, like an animal one, kinda like yeah. Samson. Yeah, for book. sure. Because he had all those like biblical references in the first book. Yeah. Huh. Wasn't like the first wasn't Cain and Abel's like first weapon made out of a jawbone too? I'd have to go back and read on that. I, don't I think so. Yeah, because Cain no. kills Abel with a jawbone, I believe. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you. If, yo, if church just told us the cool parts. Right. Right. <laughs> they just told us the cool parts. I go. <laughs> Here's the first time somebody got murdered. Even like, okay, so like, there's this fucking jawbone, right? <laughs> and these two brothers are gonna kill each other. The first people to ever kill each other. It's fucking nuts, right? We got this little guy with the slingshot. You won't believe what the fuck he does. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined like a clickbait article being like, <laughs> with one little stone, you won't believe what he does next. <laughs> Giants hate him. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. Okay. I might I might make some videos later, like being a <laughs> being a interested in the story of the Bible pastor, not interested in the shit about religion. I think it'd be right. funny. <laughs> Just tell him the story. Pastor who only cares about cool. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm uh, going to hell if I do that. But it might <laughs> could, be worth it. That could funny. be some fun skits though. For sure. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing, right? Yeah. Like just uh, oh my god, it'd be am uh, I'm just I'm racking my brain with like even breaking down Genesis. We're like, okay, so there was nothing, right? And then like out, out of the water came this land. It was crazy. <laughs> but like oh my god. okay, okay. Tangent, <laughs> sorry. Um and so he's he's wondering about this riddle and uh it's like the answer to these or the answer to this riddle and all the rest can be in the back mm -hmm. and uh, he flips the book over and the answer guy's been ripped out or yeah. something um and like oh that's kind of funny because samson got mad at those guys for knowing the answer mm -hmm. um but he, he goes back into the store to ask these guys um like hey do you know this riddle like mm -hmm. i'm curious now and uh aaron the guy that calvin was playing um uh chess with just start singing he just has a song ready just it's right there he knows yeah. he knows the answer to this riddle right away yeah and um he's like oh it's a two-part riddle um he says something about like you know it's, it's the lion and then like honey growing flowing out of the lion's head or something I didn't write it down. Cause... It's uh, Samson and the lion got in attack, and Samson climbed up on the lion's back. Well, you've read about lion killing men with their paws, but Samson put his hands around the lion's jaws. He rode that lion till the beast fell dead, and the bees made money, made honey in the lion's head. What a piece of shit! Giving these guys a riddle where he's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't think about it like that. That's funny. Wow. Okay. You asshole. Wow. Um, <laughs> then, since he gave him that answer, um, he's like, well, I've got another riddle for you. Mm -hmm. um, what can run but never walk? What has a mouth but never talks? Has a bed but never sleeps? Has a head but never weep? And Jake's like, oh, I don't know what. He's like, no, you got to figure that one out. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you that one. That's a pretty easy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, oh, like I was like, okay, I, I recognize this one. I yeah, this one. that's like what was a face and hands or so, something about a clock. Like that that riddle. It's like what has a face? What a face, but never talks. And a, I don't fucking know. It's, they're trying to get you to guess a clock, right? As a face yeah. and hands, but it's like one of the ones you hear as a kid, and you're like, oh my god, a river. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so. Jake leaves after getting that other riddle, mm -hmm. and uh, he's walking down the street, and he just has the feeling of, like, something's good, something good's about to happen. Did Jake get microdosed with mescaline or something? Like, whatever <laughs> Roland took <laughs> to go talk to the speaking ring demon. <laughs> that would be hilarious. 
Because he is vibing yeah. presently. He is just having a dang old time. You don't have these good a days sober. At least in my experience. <laughs> you know what, though? Like, he is kind of, he is kind of like an altered state of mind that he's been in the last three weeks. For sure. I'm wondering if it's you know? just the relief of that. You right. know, like, that's, that's kind of what I was like. Euphoric yeah. of just being the silence in his head, you know? That... And he's got the white thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it's privileged to have it. Whiteness and the rightness. Um, but as he's walking, he kind of starts getting that feeling again of knowing what's going to happen. Um, and so he sees a bum asking for money, so he gives him the change from the book. He walks past a record store and playing painted black of course um he walks past a mirror store where he's able to see like you know a bunch of different reflections of himself and uh he knows that coming up he's going to find a deli with the door to the other world Mm -hmm. and so he just takes off running he's so pumped yeah um if that sounds familiar because it's been a while uh (laughs) that was eddie's dream yeah it hasn't been a long time for them. It's been a long yeah. time for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he turns the corner, and it's a vacant lot. The yeah. building, the deli has been torn down. Fuck. Yeah. Um, so all that happiness, all that like joy that Jake has been feeling, instantly crushed. Mm-hmm. He's like feeling despair and darkness now. Um, he sees a sign. Um, in the lot, advertising that it's going to be the home of the new Turtle Bay condos. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, he sees like graffiti. Um, this graffiti, this graffiti artist is a poet. Um, so he, he writes out the whole turtle poem. See the turtle of enormous spirits on its shell. He holds the earth. If you want to run and play, come along with me today. Which you know, I think that's the same one that Roland was. Telling him earlier, I believe it's the first two lines are, but the stanza changes. Okay, the, I, I the think it. Part's not, yeah, I don't think okay, that, that the that end part is. Still, yeah. yeah, I believe it's uh, like though his thoughts are something in kind, he holds us all within his mind. I believe is. And later, later he finds another piece of graffiti. That yeah, says he holds us all within his mind. Yeah, and uh, did on the sign they said that it was construction by Samba Real Estate. Did we have Sombra? We had Lamarck and the other big one. Oh my God! Um, if we did, I don't remember. It. Okay, Sam might be one that I just okay. I might just I, I looked at it and thought it was something different. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, Turtle Bay, of course. Yep. Do 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 do. Crazy stuff going on. <laughs> oh, I just had, had kind of a thought, um, and I, I don't think this will be the case because I cause I feel like Jake has to reunite with him by the end of the next chapter. But I was like, what if he enters through the, the turtle portal? They're mm-hmm. heading from the bears. Oh, on the other side of the world, turtle, yeah. yeah. And just, then they, they meet up in the middle of the tower. Okay. But I was like, I feel like they have to meet up sooner than that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That'd be kind of a cool thought. He's got all this like, turtle iconography around him right now. Yeah, no doubt. And that's uh, it's interesting, the turtle, the turtle stuff going on. How much that connects. I'd like to, I need to like, Dog ear this passage and come back to it at a later date after I've read or reread a book that has more turtle stuff in it. Just see if I can yeah. find deeper connections, or I can just Google it. People <laughs> have probably done this, <laughs> but I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be the one that finds stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, that's fun. Yeah. Um, but he he decides to jump over the fence. Um, and in doing so, he like he lands and sprains his ankle. Um, but he is quickly distracted by that because he starts feeling like this powerful. Aura in there, like he just he feels like he's in a place of power. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know why. Um, he, he's kind of like looking around. Um, he sees a sign for the old deli still like laying in the rubble. Um, and on the back of that, there's more graffiti that says uh, "Heals us all within his mind." Part. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like the the thrum of power that he hears, like starts becoming a hum, and then that hum starts becoming voices that he's hearing. Some um, and he, he looks he looks around, and this is another part that would be so cool to see on film because you can see like, oh that pile of bricks over there. There's like faces in it now. Like those bricks, those facial features. Mm-hmm. Um, in you 
know, in the weeds with faces. Everywhere he looks, he's seeing like faces singing. I um, can't really tell what they're singing, but uh, you know, in, in the singing, he does hear some names. He hears Martin, Cuthbert, Roland, and uh, then he keeps looking, and a little bit further in, he sees a key on the ground, mm-hmm. and just like a little bit past that key, he finds a rose, mm-hmm. which um, you know, going back to Eddie's vision. It was, uh, you know, he needed the key to get in here, and then it was a field of roses. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, it's more more related. I really wish it's probably just a metal key. Otherwise, they probably would have they probably would have like said something about it. Being a wooden it's, key, it's or really cool. If it was the wooden key that Eddie's like currently. Yeah, whittling. yeah, that would be really cool. Um, if that somehow gets them on the house, that that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. He doesn't mention whether or not it is metal, but in my mind, it is. And it, it feels like that would be something they would mention. If it, like if, a if wooden, it was a key wooden key is key, nuts. Yeah. Yeah. If it was a wooden key, you'd probably mention it. Yeah. Um. But then he just falls to his knees and starts crying. Mm-hmm. Um, he he takes the key, and um, you know we get like a little another little description, a drawing of it, like this is the last time, and it is the same pattern as mm-hmm. the one that Eddie saw and is currently making. Um. And then, like, the chorus of voices just rises, and she gets so much louder. Um, he, he takes the key, and he, he, like, tucks it inside of his book. Um, but he's like, the flower is the real key. Mm-hmm. And so he reaches out to touch it, and he notices, like, the grass around it is, like, this weird alien-looking purple grass. And um, but once he touches the rose, out. Mm-hmm. Passes out. So many people do that. No, yeah, it just faint, you know. Whatever. Yep. Roland's fainted like five times. Jake's, right. Jake's got his due, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so he he sees this rose and he he passes out from it. Did you feel like this was kind of a parallel between uh, Roland's like dealing with Man in Black, like just like something so big is happening, but now I, I can't remain conscious because of all that I've seen or experienced. I didn't think of that, but that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of how I saw it, was that, uh, because we don't know necessarily what's in this rose just yet, but after, okay, they say it's suns in the rose, right? Like suns, maybe all suns, right? Maybe there's universes within this rose. And the Man in Black's thing about size being the ultimate crazy thing of the universe, and how that kind of made Roland trip out. Yeah. Like this rose... The Dark Tower is a linchpin for all reality. Is this Rose Roland's universe? You know? That would be wild. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking of universes and yeah. that this Rose has a universe in it, maybe, or at least suns or a lot of energy, something like that, right? Yeah. That's what it made me think of because I, that them both passing out after having all this information given to them, one by the Rose, one by the Man in Black. I drew the parallel to me, at least. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I just kind of got like, you know, he's feeling like this hum of power, like this, this is power in the air, mm-hmm. and like something huge and magical is happening, and like he touches it, and I felt like, I felt like it had always like overwhelmed him or something, mm-hmm. and like he was just like, there was just so much power he couldn't comprehend it or couldn't deal with it, but I like your explanation a lot better. Okay. That's way more interesting. And I don't remember if I'm right or not. <laughs> I could very well be right or I could very well be wrong. So I, I don't remember the sig- – I remember that the rose is significant because there's obviously this yeah, attached sure. to it. But um, yeah. but he wakes up on the ground uh, with, like, dried blood on his head because when he passed out, he, he fell and hit his head on a brick. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kinda, he's, he laughs and he's, like, kind of surprised that he wasn't mugged. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't have a lot on me, but, I mean, I have a watch. It's not a fancy watch, but I'm still passed out in the middle of New York. Somebody would have taken my watch. And he says he's been asleep for a little over five hours. Yeah. That's a nap, boy. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that is, you uh, are out, out for five hours. That is how much hours. I slept last night. <laughs> yeah, that's a night's sleep for some people, you know. Uh, how In your mind, how big is this vacant lot? Um, New York is not very... That's what I'm thinking. Like, oh, it's like this vacant lot. Vacant lot has a, a meaning of vast open area to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously here in Canada, a vacant lot in our hometown, 
<laughs> fucking half a mile, you know? <laughs> it could be a couple acres. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It's huge, you know? But uh, with this, like, I I imagine this is... Okay, you've seen Futurama? Mm-hmm. You know about the size of the pizza shop? They yeah. show it on the street? Yeah, that makes sense. That's about what I'm picturing for, like, Probably, Tom and Jerry's yeah. uh, deli. And then it's just empty now. It's, like, yeah. broken down with a, with a... Like, trash and stuff in it. And, like, it's in between two other buildings, maybe, or yeah. whatever it may be. You know, it's just kind of right there, and it's not very big. But they keep on saying, oh, there's all this stuff happening. There's so much, like, grass and bushes, and there's a pile of... I'm like, oh, my God, how big is this thing? Right. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than we're imagining, but still, it's New York City, so it can't be huge. No. You, land like that wouldn't... It'd be sold up, you Yeah, know, for sure. <laughs> if it was big, so... I mean, and I guess, you know, it is going to be, like, the new home of the condo. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. So it does have to be a bit. A bit You're right. I didn't even think it. They so okay. They had a deli on a place that could hold <laughs> apartments. Right. <laughs> How big was this fucking deli? <laughs> so that guy just owned a lot of the land. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> um. But he, he takes a look at the roads again, and he's like, "It's it's still there." Um. But he can he can sense like the power is gone. Yeah, he even says that the Gone grass somewhere. was just had paint on it. It wasn't yeah. purple grass, you know. Or you're yeah. being stupid. Yeah, you know, nothing that that beer bottle isn't brown fire anymore, and you know, it's just you were, you were bonked on the head. And uh, then he he knew what he had seen then, and then what he was he was seeing now. Camouflage, he whispered. It was right here. Everything was, and it still is. It's okay. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Inanimate objects having camouflage like that and right. being able to like, protect themselves from people they don't want to necessarily see. Yeah. It's awesome to me. And then um, he, he sees a face. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know what he sees in him. But, like, he, he sees a face and he's like, are you Allie? Yeah, he looked at a pile of bricks and old broken chunks of plaster and saw a barely discernible face hiding within it. It was the face of a woman with a scar on her forehead. Allie, Jake murmured, isn't that your name? There was no answer. The face was gone. Did he even know about Allie? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I don't think that Roland shared that story with him. At if least I am not, on, I'm not, not on camera. <laughs> yeah, not on the book, right? Yeah. I'm not if I'm rolling, I'm not telling Jake about the woman I just killed. No, for sure. <laughs> After she went insane for saying a number. <laughs> you know? Right. It's not happening. Right. But, um But he he hangs out for a little while. And um, he's kind of scared that something will happen to this rose. But then he hears Roland's voice again, and he's like, nothing's going to happen. The rose will, will be fine. It, it has been fine, and it will continue to be okay. Yeah, he even says that the uh, the rose will protect itself from yeah. somebody wanting to cut it or to step on it. And how? I mean, obviously, it right. might have just zapped Jake for getting too close. Yeah. Or, I don't know. And then, well, Jake even, the, the rose kind of moves. Here in just yeah. a second, you know, it moves towards him whenever he reaches for it a second time. Kind of, I imagine like a uh, a uh, a dog that doesn't necessarily want to be petted just yet, but does want to be petted. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, okay. Uh, come on. Let's let's get a little closer here. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Jake decides hey, it's time to go home. Yeah. I I need to go home. Yeah. Which was not in the direction I was expecting. I was not expecting him to go home at all either. Like to go was, home like ever again? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, he's leaving. He's on his own. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that he was like, you know, I thought this was the beginning of Jake West. Mm-hmm. He was just, um, but no, he, he does go home, and uh, when he gets out there, um, he you know goes into the elevator, and his dad's there waiting for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he thinks that maybe like the doorman saw him, called up or something, um, but Mister Chambers is there. Pissed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also coked up. Yeah. Like he, so he's he's not just pissed. He's kind of out of his mind. Yeah, for sure. Um, and he he grabs Jake and he like shakes him and like drags him to the elevator and like drags him all the way back upstairs. And like he's kind of just going off on him the whole time. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, why do you think this is okay? Why would you do this? Um, deals in like the the teacher call. One teacher called, another one showed up here. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like, props to that teacher for showing up there because, like, that's not something I've really ever seen, like, in, in real life or um, in other media. Like, just the, you know, K 
kid goes truant, like she, she shows up at their house to check on them. Yeah, it is. I mean, I was like that's awesome. That it's really cool. Probably wouldn't happen in public schools, right? You know, it might be a Piper thing that like, yeah. oh, you have a kid leave in the middle of class, like. And, and later on, we do see the teacher who showed up like does genuinely kind of care for him. Mm-hmm. Um, He's his, his French teacher. Yeah, I the believe, French yeah. teacher. Um. So yeah, so he he's dragged up to the apartment. Dad's coked out. Mom is probably taking three Valiums, is what he's been saying. Mm-hmm. Um, he Since has a line. Noon. Yeah, he he has a line saying something like, uh, "Life's better on chemicals" or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, both of his parents were firm believers in better living through chemistry. Yeah, better living through chemistry. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's a that's a magazine title right there. As a a child of families of addiction, that fuck, I'm like, oh my god, that's yeah, a bar. <laughs> what what a line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. And yeah, to have one kid, a parent that's coked up, and then a parent that's on opiates yeah what a, a wild twist of a home life <laughs> everything king does this damn character is bad yeah <laughs> got a mom opiate got a dad coke <laughs> and uh so yeah dad is just you know shaking him and yelling at him um and this is when jake shows his steel mm-hmm. he uh he stands up for himself and like you know stop yeah you will stop shaking me let me go yeah. And uh, the dad kind of like takes a step back. He's like a little scared of Jake in this moment. Like, what the hell is going on here? Mm-hmm. And uh, so he, he does. He lets him go. Jake basically fucks off and goes to his room. Yeah. Uh, his dad says, Your headmaster called. Your French teacher actually came here. They both had. Is that Buku? Buku, yeah. Uh, That's how you spell Buku? B e a u c o u p, I think so. I thought it was like a, I've never spelled it right, but that's, I thought it was like a stupid it. like American word, not something French. <laughs> yeah, <know>? right. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Yeah, because people are like, oh yeah, I've got buku bucks. Exactly, it's something that's like slang, you know. Yeah. I, I, buku, I'd have said b double o k double o. Right, you know, nope, that's how exactly. I would have done it. And, I'm pretty sure that's how I spelled it before. For sure, yeah. If, I, yeah. if I'm gonna say, it, if I'm gonna spell it like in text or something, I'd be like, "Oh no, a little red line." Okay, like, yeah, yeah, I understand. It's not a real word. That's Buku. <laughs> that's that's how I read it, at least. I yeah. gotta look it up. I haven't had time just yet, but I'm gonna look that up because it cracks me up. And um, <clears throat> his dad is like, you know, uh, Jake makes observation that his dad isn't mad that he did it. He's more mad that he got embarrassed. Mm-hmm. He's more mad that he got taken away from work. To yeah. Deal with because he's home I mean this is like five I imagine give him an hour hour and a half it's probably six seven thirty probably between there right and you know like he was saying before like his dad usually would get home like nine thirty yeah and so you know with um com- um you know with the, with the commute being what it is in uh, in New York like it's gonna take him a while to get home too oh know? for sure I didn't even think about that yeah so he's probably been out of work since like Four, yeah, not earlier. If not earlier, I mean, could have happened. He left school. I think it was eight forty-five. He walked out of the class. It wasn't um, really well. So he could have been, you know, at All home waiting yeah. on his son since at least noon. You know. Yeah. So yeah, he's uh, probably very pissed. You know. Oh yeah. Being a big hench- hit honcho with the network. Um, and so he's he's in his room now, just kind of like listening to his parents argue, um, about him. And then the, the housekeeper, you know, closest thing he has to a friend, shows up and she uh, she has some food for him. And uh, he's like, hey, I thought you might want to eat. And that's when he realizes, like, oh, yeah, I am starving, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't ate today. <laughs> One of those, oh, shit, yeah, I am hungry. What about that? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's been since uh, breakfast. <laughs> Hell, yeah. She makes him a bologna and cheese sandwich, his favorite. Bologna isn't great. Yeah, I was like, "You are this good." Yeah. Like if if we, if we forgot because of the the, the literature love earlier, <laughs> here's how we remember. Like, oh yeah, he's totally good. I'm I'm gonna go out on a ledge here. Fried bologna is all right. Oh, for sure. I'll have fried bologna. I will. Yeah, bologna is is not bad. Like it's not as gross as people make it out to be. I'm taking. It's just not like. I wouldn't call it my favorite. No. I'll eat it absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think I'll eat any deli meat sandwich. Right. I'm sure. not a big fan of pastrami. I'll have, I'll have a pastrami sandwich. Yeah. 
Corned beef I like on Rubens. Yeah. Like turkey, ham, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. They have like chicken deli meat. Do they do yeah, that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Do they? Yeah. The fuck they do? They yeah, have to like right. grind it up and then make it into a loaf and cut <laughs> it, don't they? Probably. I, I... Yeah. Never thought about it, huh? No. Probably. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chicken doesn't cut like that. It, yeah. You know, it shreds. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminded me of, uh... <laughs> there was this clip um, where one of those like Food Network chefs, like, you know, um, he he got, like, a bunch of little kids around mm-hmm. um, and showed him, like, oh, this is how they, they make chicken nuggets. And he's like, here's, like, the chicken breast, the chicken thigh. They take it away to use that for something good. And then, like, this is all just, like, the scraps, the crappy parts of the chicken that are left. And then they throw them into a blender. Mm-hmm. And, like, he shows them the whole process. And uh, then he cooks them up. And he's like, now, who would still want to eat that? <laughs> Every single kid in that room raises their hand yeah jake watching the video <laughs> raises his hand because like it still tastes fine and it, it, like what are they why are they trying to gross us out of chicken nuggets right what has hot dogs or chicken nuggets ever done to us right Just, they're not the highest quality best that's fine they taste fucking amazing yeah chicken nuggets are great yeah <laughs> like i get like oh it's the bad part of the chicken i don't care right like what are you just gonna do throw that part away like if you're gonna say that like oh i don't eat that because it's like the bad part of the chicken right then you shouldn't be eating meat because it's, an, it's a weird part. You're eating flesh. You right. know, like if you can get past that in your mind, you can eat any part of it. Right. It's like saying people, I've had uh, fucking uh, like goat fries, which are like goat testicles. Had oh, them before. Yeah. Not terrible. It tastes pretty good. Had with hot sauce. I was like, oh, oh, I'm not going to eat this every day and just be stuffed full of goat fries, you know? <laughs> but no, I'll try that. Like, yeah, if you guys eat it, it's traditionally, you eat it. Okay. If I can get past eating flesh of something else. I can I can eat anything, you know. There's some some fleshy things that I, like I, I don't know if I could eat. Mm-hmm. Um, but they sell like uh, like cow tongue. Yeah, I don't know if I could eat that, but like I can try it. I, I'll try it. I I, I work at a, a meat place during whenever I can, and uh, yeah, like the people buy you know whole cow heads and beef tongue. I sold some yesterday. Yeah, you know, and so it's like. Yeah, I'll try it. You cook it up. Especially if you give it to people that know, know how to, to cook it. it. Yeah, yeah like, oh, sure. fuck yeah, yeah. I don't care what it is. Cool, I'll try it. Let's yeah. go. They buy intestines and all that shit all the time. Like, okay, I'll try it. If it's, I can get if I can get past, like I said, even a chicken leg is a fucking leg of an animal. <laughs> you know, those bones are bones of an animal. So I don't, yeah. you get, if I, I feel like if I take a stance against anything, I'm like, okay, that's just the waterfall in my mind of being like, I would not be a vegetarian. <laughs> right. That makes sense. <laughs> So, yeah. Where the fuck were we? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, bologna sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the beef tongue from bologna sandwich. At least I try to, like, make it to where everybody else can lily pad along with us. I think right. we, we have some, a good lines. <laughs> yeah. But that last lily pad is way the fuck down there. <laughs> Let's just get, you know, get back in reverse for a second here. Um, he, that might be a clip. Where the fuck were we? Oh, yeah, bologna sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> um but he he's talking to her and he's like they they sent you in here to check on me and like find out what's going on right it's like yeah yeah they did yeah he um said, like recruited as a as something or maybe a translator yeah which kind of broke my heart too yeah that his parents don't know how to talk to him yeah or don't know how to listen to him how about that yeah I was like, absolutely. Damn, that just fucking upsetting and, um, you know, it's also kind of sad because this is the person who he, he, like, oh, this is my friend. Well, not really. She's just here to mm-hmm. do what they say. Yeah. And he's kind of realizing that now, too. I think he's kind of growing up a lot with, like, just seeing these parents in his life and realizing. I don't remember if it's him that says that she was kind of irritated that she had been here an hour too late or if she actually comes out and says it. Oh, but, yeah. Again, yeah, that, she was kind of irritated that she was there past her schedule. It's just a job. She doesn't give a shit that Jake's yeah. home. Like, she could have went home on time without Jake being here. Like, oh, yeah. fuck ever, it's a job. Yeah. Y'all find your kid. I need to go home and feed mine, you know? Right. Shit like that. So, that um, sucks. <laughs> but she also gives him, like, an uh, envelope full of, like, school papers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it said that the French teacher dropped it off for him when he came to visit. And uh, after she leaves, Jake is reading through it, and uh, there's just, like, a, a note from his French teacher that's really sweet. And, yeah. like, he's like, hey, hey, buddy, you know, I, I understand, like, you know, people get 
nervous about finals. I don't know if that's what's going on, but you know, you can make this test up. Just you know, come talk to me tomorrow at school. And uh, Jake is like genuinely touched by this. He just about starts crying. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if he does or not, but he definitely thinks like about crying. And uh, it's like the first like affection that he's gotten in a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, buddy. Yeah. That a uh, simple, hey, it's all right. No, yeah. you know, like he said yeah. that. Jake felt like crying. The concern was stated, and that was wonderful. But there were other things, unstated things, in the note that are even more wonderful. Yeah. Warmth, caring, and an effort. Yeah. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah. Little guy. Yeah. Just a little guy. And, uh, <clears throat> and like, he, he, uh, after that, he reads through, um, his English paper's in there. It has a note on it. Um, his teacher has already read through this paper and graded it and i'm like that is the fastest turnaround i've ever seen on an essay great job great yeah. job by this teacher yeah. maybe the class size isn't very very big yeah maybe she has like six fucking students i don't know but still being able to the same day grading no way not yeah, a chance for sure and like by the end of school because the french teacher probably like came there pretty soon after school yeah. crazy she says she said she did it in her free hour yeah the planning period whatever Maybe maybe planning periods for teachers aren't as stressful because it's like it's done, you know. Like, oh, all I have to do is grade because it's finals, yeah. you know. Like, nothing Makes else sense, to do. Yeah. But yeah, good good on her for turning it around. I do love. It's a bad look for English teachers. <laughs> <laughs> this whole note is a bad look for English teachers. <laughs> it really is. Like I was like, so bad. I was like, this lady's delusional. <laughs> like, this is. I feel like this is him poking fun at. Uh, people for sure definitely but it's also like i think it <laughs> i'm a little biased here <laughs> she has a little bit of merit yeah. of like trying to figure out what the fuck this kid is talking about right you know like you have you kind of when you're approaching something like this you have to take it at face value what is being said here and how can i try to go into the writer's mind you know like i'll, I'll the only information i have is what i know about this kid and hopefully you try to avoid that and just look at the writing, you know, yeah. and try to infer as much as you can. And it's obviously very cliche things that she's pulling on. Like, oh, could the the guy be the uh, the authority figure and also your dad? And are you struggling with school? And all that, like, it's definitely cliche to think that a kid yeah. would be writing about that. I get that King's making fun of her, and I think he has the right to do so. I also think that this it's is... It's like, it's funny, but I get it. Like Yeah, like, okay, y'all, everybody sure. here is right. Yeah. But it's still funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Everybody here is right. Everybody <laughs> here is right. But, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just realized something. Yeah. We were, like, kind of joking earlier that, like, there's no way in hell he met the word requirement. Mm-hmm. He totally did, though. Because he's got some pictures on the front cover, and he's got that picture of the tower, mm-hmm. and those are each worth a thousand words. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'll leave. You just think about th- think that <laughs> up right now. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> that was really stupid. <laughs> oh my god! All right. <laughs> uh I did like that she said that she did not pretend to understand all the symbolism, i.e. Yeah. Lady of Shadows and Gunslinger. <laughs> but he is the prisoner. So, okay, no. Yeah. That's not what's happening. But Jake obviously doesn't... Jake laughs at this. Let's get oh, to he, that. he, like, cracks up. I didn't find it that funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, think, I, I, think, I think part of the reason that he's cracking up is, like, um, just because he knows, like, the truth of it is that he's, like, going insane. Yeah. And, like... Like, he was so scared about this all day long, yeah. about him, like, this paper is going to be the thing that gets him locked up. Oh, but instead, actually, no, no, no. Yeah, she wanted to have it publicized. So, yeah. like, okay. Yeah, okay, I get that, that side of it. Yeah. So, it could be just, like, laughter from relief. The relief, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give it that. I'll... Um, One thing that she does mention in her thing is, like, um, you know, tries to figure out who Roland is. She's like, oh, I thought maybe that was your father. So I looked at your records, and I see that his middle initial is an R. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know what that stands for. Um, so is that where you're coming from with this? Um, and then, you know, in the next section, 
Jake's parents come to both check up on him. Um, they don't really say much of anything important, but um, when his dad is in there checking up on him, he's like, hey, what's your middle name, Dad? And Dad's like, don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. Um, but then he's just like, oh, no, it's just an initial. It's just the letter R. Kind of like the president in Harriet's crewman. Mm-hmm. It's just the letter R. How mad would you have been if his middle name was Roland? <laughs> I would have been so annoyed, dude. I would have been like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" That that would be a very, very immature writer's choice. Yeah, you know that. And I think he was playing with people's expectations right there. Like he was absolutely fucking with the reader. Yeah, where you you had to cringe the whole time. Like, no, I'm on book three, King. Don't do this to me now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that uh, it wouldn't have been cool at all. No, um, but that had me look up the uh. Thing he says about Harry S. Truman, absolutely true. Yep, it's just the, just the letter S. Yep. Um, they what's what's funny is that like his parents named him that after like two other relatives whose name started with S. Mm. Um, and I like to imagine it didn't say this anywhere that I read it, but I like to imagine that they just couldn't pick. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, S. we got Susan and Steve fighting yeah. over this shit. Let's just both tell them that's after them, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is our, our son, Harry S. <laughs> Not a great name, either. Yeah. Uh, I do have a cousin with the... Uh, <clears throat> his middle n- name is just J, and it's the letter J. Yeah? So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, his first name is also KC, and it's K and a C. But yeah. <laughs> his whole name's jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. KCJ. He's a good guy. All right. Uh, so, he starts reading... This batshit crazy <laughs> Charlie the Choo Choo. Yeah, so after his dad leaves and after he stops, you know, laughing in hometown, it's like, all right, it's time to, you know, actually read this book that I bought. And uh, it's a it's a picture book. Um, With a lot of fucking words. <laughs> it's pretty long, yeah. Honestly, if this is a picture book, that's... No, seriously, that's probably 30, 40 page picture book then. With all these, all these pages that are not all of this right now is. I was about to say no, but then like they probably only have you know like a few lines per page. Yes, I'm saying yeah, yeah. Picture books there's maybe three sentences per page. Cool thing. Um, I was trying to find the little like poem that uh, Charlie says throughout it. So yeah. I, so I googled it. Um, tried. It. I didn't click on anything. <laughs> but um, yeah. the little card that like pops up on Google. Um said like published 2016 mm-hmm. and so i was like wait a second mm-hmm. and so i clicked on it and like yeah he uh, in 2016 he published this as like just a, a children's picture book under the like pseudonym of the author that he like said wrote it in here mm-hmm. like, oh now i gotta get a handle that I, I'm not... I have to find it right that sounds so cool it'd be awesome like, i just want to see the art and i believe it's word for word like how this is told That's in the awesome. book yeah it's a uh, i believe also you know uh King had a pseudonym there for a bit. You know about mm-hmm. this? Yeah. Uh, like, we we talked about it, I think um, a while back. Like, um, he wrote some books under it, and they were all kind of crappy. So there, I really enjoyed the Bachman series. It's yeah. Richard Bachman is his, was his, yeah, his pseudonym, Bachman, right? And I believe his wife writes under a pseudonym, and that this is her pseudonym. I believe oh, yeah? so. I believe so. I don't quote me on this, but I believe that this was hers for a while. That's interesting. So, I yeah. like that a lot. Of Instead of going like even his uh his son, one of them did owen kept the king name but uh joe changed his last name so he wouldn't be associated so he could write his own stuff he's right like like also so it wouldn't be joe king uh, it's just a terrible name isn't it, it is. <laughs> um but no i would absolutely do that if I, like my dad was famous and i wanted to go into the same line of work i'd just be like no i'm i'm Steve, someone else. Yeah. If you were Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid, you wouldn't keep the last name? Right. Yeah. No, I'd be, <laughs> I would just be like Steve Schwartz. Yeah. Like, Schwartz. Uh, Schwartz. Great name. Yeah. Doesn't mean black. We don't have that for the whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this, this story about a, a train that used to do the St. Louis to Topeka run. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's about Bob the engineer mm-hmm. um, who drove this, train that he called charlie um for the midworld railway company midworld again yep. yeah um and you know he one day he realized that like charlie was alive 
and Charlie can talk to him. Um, he doesn't say a whole lot. Mostly what he says is this short little poem. Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple teacher trained, and I'll always be the same. I only want to race along, beneath the bright blue sky, and be a happy teacher trained until the day I die. And pretty much every time that we see Charlie talk, that's what he says. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it goes on for a little bit about how great of a team they were and how fast they were. Um, but one day, the, the Midworld Railway Company says, hey, uh, we've got a newer, faster, stronger train for you. So we're retiring Charlie, and you're going to drive the train now. And uh, Bob's like, no, you, you can't do that. That's, that's my boy. Of course. It's it's the the, the children's book. You know, like, no, we can't yeah. let them go. I want to be with Charlie only. Yeah, yeah. and so um, he was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to retire too. Mm-hmm. And um, he, like, spends his days working on, like, train engines and stuff and, like, kind of doing maintenance on Charlie. Uh, but Charlie is just basically sitting at the back of the warehouse um, and, like, kind of describes him, like, he's crying almost. Yeah, that like, there was. Like, oil's leaking out of the front. And yeah. Just, like, weird running down his face. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is a kid's book? Like, that's weird, so, right? So depressing and horrifying. You've seen the cover of Charlie the Choo Choo in real life, yeah. right? Yeah. Weird. The kids, the kids don't, don't look, look all, all that, that happy, happy right? No, it, it looks, looks street, street, strange as shit. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So he's he's stuck in there, right? And Jake starts to think about these uh, about these pictures. How I just kind of mentioned, right? That it was uh, these pictures are starting to kind of be off putting to him. Like this isn't just a normal children's books, which actually Miss Mrs. Shaw says she read as a child. Mm-hmm. So at least in Jake's world, this book exists. I think, like, it said something about it coming out in the 40s. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Go ahead. Um, but, so one day, um, Bob Boss needs to, you know, they're in St. Louis, and he needs to be in speech to get for his daughter, Susanna. Um, she's got, like, a recital or something going on. He needs to get there fast. Mm-hmm. But the new quicker, faster train, it broke down. They got water in the engine, something like that. That and he can't, can't run it now. The, the name of the guy is also Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin, yeah. Which we got to, we got, you got to, right? Yeah. I mean, there's only there's so many names in the world, but Martin and Martin yep. being mentioned twice. Martin Broadcloak from uh, Gilead. And I think this one, I think that Martin was an E, this one was an I. Mm-hmm. So I imagine if that's second. just like, because I believe that Roland is not speaking English. He's speaking Speak. in language that can be communicated as such so we can pick up on things. But <clears throat> the uh, yeah, the old great letters or whatever it may be, or yeah, the at least the high speech I think he does in the first yeah. book, is a completely different language. Oh, sure. So the Martin part, might just be their way yeah. of spelling. They might not have eyes. And we say yeah. that like uh, Roland doesn't recognize some letters in English. Yeah. That might be like an I. Maybe they don't have an I. It's just an E, you know? That makes sense. Or at least Gilead has an I in it, so maybe there goes that whole theory. Oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there goes that whole theory, but whatever. <laughs> um... But Bob is like, hey, let me and Charlie, like, let me and Charlie do it. Put them back on their tracks and we'll get there so fast. Mm-hmm. Especially if he's not carrying any luggage. Absolutely. Gone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they take off and uh, you know, Charlie says his poem again. Bliss fully happy. He speeds down the, down the track. And uh, Mr. Martin is pretty amazed. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he uh, tells Bob and Charlie that they can, uh, you know, officially come out of retirement to, um, you know, they can't be delivering freight anymore, but they'll basically get to spend the rest of their days at amusement parks, like bringing joy to children and getting to go. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what they wanted, really, but, you know, they're not better be- than being shut up in a warehouse all day. Yeah, I guess you get to kind of still be useful. You yeah. Know, that's what they can take away from this. It's not... Charlie and Bob don't necessarily get what they want, but it's better than what they had. I don't know. It's a weird. This isn't. This isn't. It's, it's trying to offer as a children's book, but this wouldn't be a typical children's book. Either. Yeah. I read, I read this to my kids. I'd be like, "What the fuck was the point of this?" <laughs> right. <laughs> this is so, so weird. weird. This is a train that doesn't, doesn't want you to ask questions. <laughs> Just <laughs> red flag number one. Right. Ask, ask questions. questions. Ask, ask as many as you can, especially from a talking talk fucking train. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. 
and yeah, so Jake, like, you know, like you were saying earlier, the uh, picture at the end of the book is, like, some kids riding on on Charlie, and um, Jake kind of notes, like, they look like they're ready to get the hell off mm-hmm. as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. They do not look happy to get on the train. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but then Jake tries to go to sleep. It's pretty, pretty late now. Um, but the voices come back. The parade is over. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are yelling and screaming and arguing with his head. And uh, he looks over at his pair of pants. Um, they're like hanging off the back of the chair or whatever. And uh, he reaches in the pocket and grabs the, the key that he picked up. And he's holding it in his hand and the voices just says, stop. And uh, so with that, he's able to get a peaceful night's sleep. And that's the end of the chapter two. And he, he went to bed and was asleep with the key class loosely in his hand. Three minutes. Oh, wait, never mind. He said he thought with no idea to who he the thought was for. Tell him to grab the key. The key makes the voices go. That's how we end the chapter. Like, okay. Yeah. He's obviously trying to communicate to somebody on Roland's side. Right? Yeah. About maybe Eddie can give Roland this key. And oh, yeah. yeah okay. Maybe I made a little spoiler there. That I... No, that's, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense, especially with all the, the other connections we've seen between Jake and Eddie. Mm-hmm. Um, give him, yeah. No, that's, that makes a lot maybe of sense. Maybe we got a way to. Roland doesn't have to like hide his guns from himself anymore, you know, because right. he, he was, was going bad shit there for. I believe he's having a worse time than Jake right now. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird um, to me that he's having a worse time than Jake because mm-hmm. Jake has two completely separate lives, multiple deaths, and for Roland it's like yeah, for a couple of weeks something different happened. <laughs> See, yeah, because it's not like he saved Jake and his life then forked. It was yeah. a bump in the road. Just a, right. a small, a small divot where, but I guess like in his world, he caught up to the man in black without Jake. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the new reality, he never had Jake with him. And so he just did all that without Jake. So I wonder if that's even a possibility. You know, could, could he have caught up to the man in black without the man in black intervening and putting Jake there? Because yeah. the boy was the sacrifice, you know, like if all, it's ifs and buts, but I don't know. It's a good thing to think about. I wish we were at the end of this fucking series. There's <laughs> <laughs> so, so many things, things I want to say. say. But, but let's, let's start with all the other things, other things I don't want to say. The, the fucking movie sucked. sucked. And this, this is where we're picking up in the movie, right? right? Did you, did you, did you kind of get, get that, that? That this is where the movie starts? I have not seen the movie in so long. I do okay. know how it starts. So we start with Jake. And we start, we start with like what he's doing here. And like he's not even being – he's kind of crazy. But he's just talking about, oh, the gunslinger. I got to protect the world, the Dark Tower, right? He's having, like, yeah. dreams and visions of the gunslinger. And it's like, but he never died. He never went to the fucking, the desert. He just knows of just like Roland. Has this psychic connection. Yes. Yeah, so, and the movie picks up about, they're, they're trying to mix, like, one through three in about 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah. And get that, like, out of the fucking way so they could try to somehow throw in four through seven. It, it's so bad. Finish the book, and we'll talk about it. Even in the movie, like, you don't even, like, really know what the tower is, I don't think. They never say anything. Yeah. Besides Jake trying to talk to his therapist, oh, it's a linchpin between all realities. Like, the little bit of exposition they give you is, like, Jake trying to prove that he's not insane. Yeah. It's like, if you're not... I understand that whenever you are creating something from something that has a a following, cult or not, that you need to do some fan servicey things. Yeah. But you also need to make it interesting for somebody that is very ignorant of all the information. So, like, I get The Gunslinger wouldn't be great on screen. It wouldn't be a great movie. It wouldn't be maybe even a great season of a show. I think it would work on TV. I think it could be really fun. Yeah. That if you could just get people to buy in, but you need something. What you need is someone really fucking famous to play Roland. Yeah. You know, they had Idris Elba before he, and he blew up before 2016. But yeah. he's kind of taken off since then. You know, Hobbs oh, yeah. and Shaw and all this other shit. You Knuckles the Echidna. Yeah. <laughs> but, God, God oh, this could have been, been, they could have used all this momentum from Idris' career. He's just in this, another, drawing to the three, what's this? Oh, it's part of the gun, so they go back. Oh, they could have capitalized so much better. Yeah, they, they could have done such a better. How are you feeling about having Jake back in the story? 
happy. I'm, I'm really, really happy to have him back. back. Um, I, I like Jake a lot in the first book, and uh, I'm liking him a lot more now. I was kind of like, uh, not necessarily disappointed, but surprised the way the chapter ended. Mm -hmm. I really thought, like, from the beginning of the chapter, I was like, it's going to end, like, the last line of the last you know, section is going to be, like, him opening the door and door. Mm -hmm. He's going to step through back into home world. Okay. That's how I thought it was going to um, happen. And I was I was just kind of surprised that, like, it didn't. Okay. Um, probably for the best that, like, they waited a little bit on that. Yeah. Um, but that's just kind of, like, my, oh, I've, I've read a lot of stories. I know how things are going to go. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, I, could, I, could, I, I, I get, get what you're saying there. I think, I think that, that in traditional King storytelling, at least from what I'm most, it's what I'm most familiar with. It's what I usually read. Yeah. He's going to at least stretch it out a little bit. Would, Would you, you be, be upset, upset if this whole book's plot was getting Jake back to Midworld? I would be confused. Yeah. It doesn't it's seem like it has enough stakes, huh? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's going to happen in the next chapter. Um, Especially because, you know, like, book two of this book mm. is titled something else. Yeah, it is, ain't it? Um, like, only the first three chapters are titled after Jake. Yeah. So I feel like by the end of chapter three, um, he's got to rejoin his party. For sure. Um, and this time I don't think it'll happen at the end. I think it'll probably happen towards the middle. Okay. Um, yeah, if Jake didn't join back up till the end of the book, I'd feel more confused. Mm -hmm. anything, at least where we stand right now, they could absolutely introduce some more, you know, like stuff into the into the book that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, it kind of be cool if, like, you know, he has this connection to the other world, and like maybe he's like somehow communicating with Eddie and he's like doing stuff in our world that's like affecting their world or something. That could be kind of cool, but I don't think the, that's uh, what's gonna happen. The Ned from Spider Man, he's just in a computer room. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's safe, safe in the computer room while Spider Man's out fighting villains. Yeah. Right, something like that. <laughs> uh, like, like whether or not he does join the party again, uh, I think that having the hope of like him, Eddie, and Susanna now place along with our main character of Roland changes the whole tone of this series. Yeah, we now have a, a party that is so much more dynamic. Oh, absolutely. And then just having, you know, just Roland, which was, he's kind of hard to root for, but I think it would be kind of cumbersome after a bit of having this guy that's just so damn ruthless and efficient. He, he wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a fun solo story, you know? Yeah. I don't think you could get eight books out of one guy. You know? Oh, yeah. No. So like adding these other three characters into, I think, really, really flesh out this, 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 uh, this story that we're going to be reading. And I haven't read uh, Lord of the Rings, like all of them, ever. <laughs> I've, seen, yeah. I've seen the movies. Like, like they, they build, build their, their party, party relatively quickly, right? In the first book? Yeah. Um, so, like, they technically, it's like six books because each one is like separated yeah, yeah. into two. Um, so, for the first first book, it's just the, the Hobbits and Gandalf. Mm -hmm. And then in the second book, there's like is when they're it starts like when I think it's been a long time. Um, it starts with them like in the Elven City, um, like they've made it there, and now they're gonna have like the Council of Elrond, um, where they spend a lot of time talking and introducing characters that you have no stakes in yet, mm -hmm. like talk about it more politics kind of, mm -hmm. and like it's it's a slog. Um, okay. But after that, um, you know we have our full cast of characters that we can deal with. Okay. Um, so, you know, that happens, like, if you, if you count, like, you know, The Fellowship of the Ring, since it's technically two books, you count them as one, like, probably two-thirds, 75% of the way through that book, you have your whole party together. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because this is, uh, King is not afraid to say, like, he is trying to mimic Tolkien here and yeah. write his own fantasy epic, so, Yeah. Awesome. You got anything to like summarize? Tell us what you told you. You know, finish the finish the essay for this this reading. Like, anything um, you want to say at the end? <laughs> I got to restate my thesis. There you go. Yeah. 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 Um, no. So yeah, this was basically just 
know, us kind of catching up with Jake mm -hmm. um, and finding out that he, you know, it, a, a lot of the chapter wasn't really, like, now I'm kind of thinking back on it, a lot of the chapter wasn't really moving the plot forward. It was just kind of like, you know, showing us what was going on and giving us promises for the future. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like next time we're probably going to see some uh, movement on this promise. For sure. Yeah. I think that they, yeah, it was a weird, a weird chapter to just read in a vacuum. It was a good chapter. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I, I liked it a lot too. But, uh, like, yeah, like I said, nothing really happens. You know, we find he finds a key in a rose. I think isn't that right, the title like, of the chapter? Like key in yeah, rose. <laughs> yeah. Like basically to sum it up, um, Jake is going crazy. He leaves school. He buys a book, finds the key, takes a nap, goes home and reads the book. That's the whole thing. It'd be a really cool episode. Yeah. Of a TV show, I think maybe yeah. forty-five hour. 45 to an hour. It'd be a really cool episode. You know, yeah. if this was just in the middle of season three yeah. of a show, yeah. Um, especially, yeah, could you imagine if... Uh, they have to cast a kid that couldn't age very fast. <laughs> you know, if they had the gunslinger and then, like, maybe took a season off for uh, uh, Drawn of the Three, you know, and then brought Jake back for season three or whatever. Yeah. That'd be really cool to have. But you'd have to find a kid that doesn't age because you've seen like with Stranger Things, it's like, oh my god, oh, yeah, you guys are adults. Yeah, <laughs> this is like, weird. <laughs> I think I think one of the the little kids just turned eighteen. Like, oh, Millie Bobby Brown. Brown. Yeah, yeah, Millie Bobby Brown. She just turned eighteen. Yeah. Um, and I like started the show. They're like, like fourteen, fifteen, maybe at most. Yeah. Like, probably like a little bit like over. I mean, even with when our it did, they had two years off, and you could tell those kids were de-aged. Like yeah. just in that it Finn from Stranger Things, he's still he aged so much those like two years you couldn't you couldn't do it you know there's just no yeah. way. What a great what's a oh man what's his name? Have you seen it, the new it movies? Uh huh. Yeah. What's the guy from SNL's name? Ooh. Hager H Hater. Yeah, Bill Hager. Bill Hader. Such an amazing performance in it. He was he was the champion of that movie. I loved his performance as Eddie. Yeah, he, or not Eddie. Uh, oh no. Oh, which one did he play? Oh, um, no, not, not Bill, Bill, not Eddie, Eddie not Bev, Bill. not Stan. Fuck. <laughs> Richie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He played Richie. Well. He's a great. great. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, I loved it. So, yeah. Tangent. Maybe we'll break down it someday. Like the movie. That'd be fun. That would be I, I want to rewatch, rewatch that. that. I, I liked it, Chapter 2. A lot of people didn't. Yeah. I liked it. I, I thought it was good. I had a fun time. You seen the original one with... Uh, uh, no, I haven't. You haven't seen the original It? No. Oh, fuck. You got to watch that. Yeah. That's fucking bad shit. <laughs> uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> the original clown, Pennywise. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Oh, no. He's I from uh, Rocky, Rocky Mountain uh, Horror Show, too. Yeah. And um, and he was <laughs> in... Uh, scary Movie? He was in Scary Movie. He was in uh, Home Alone 2. Yeah. What the fuck is his name? Oh no! He's amazing. I love this guy. Oh no! Oh no! People are screaming at us right now. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm just go look, look it up. up. I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna blame, blame you. you. Uh, Nothing going on under the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake is magically downloading this knowledge. Man. Riveting. Tim Curry. Tim, Tim Curry. I just knew that, guys. <sighs> yeah, I I, I I was nowhere close. <laughs> I was nowhere close in thinking that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a great, great it's a great one. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's not, not good. good. <laughs> it's also it's made for TV, TV, so it's like five hours long. Yeah, I, I've heard that. It's like a mini. <laughs> I watched that shit in one setting. It was insane. Just like, oh my god, it's early '90s. Seth Green is one of the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. It's out there, dude. <laughs> I hope that's streaming somewhere. Not I think it was on Netflix, Netflix last time I checked. That's was where it? I watched it, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'd have to look, but I don't... Yeah. But anyways, I think I was talking about It's been Redacted Media, and we're breaking down uh, Stephen King's magnum opus, Dark Tower, uh, book three of the Wastelands. Coming back, we're going to read uh, probably just the next chapter, which is Door and Demon, solid 100 pages. We could fly through that. Oh, sure. So, Door and Demon. We got another... We've seen three or two demons so far. 
technically. Yeah. Do we, are we calling the succubus a demon? The one that Roland so. fucked. You think so? Yeah. He fucked her, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> okay. We had this. We had the the speaking demon below, right? In the, in, yep. in the basement, we had this one. Then we're gonna have a third one. So we've had three fucking demons. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. You know, I've just noticed. I just realized. Uh, first one was Baron Bones. One was Keen Rose. And one was what? Demon? Uh, Doran Demon. Doran Demon. Um. So that's kind of perhaps all a similar naming. For sure, something's going on here that yeah. we need to. Think about a door, maybe a door that takes a key. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Ed will get this fucking key made right. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're gonna try to be back. Well, in your guys' time, we will be back next week. <laughs> Hopefully, that week is soon for us here in in present world. But yeah, thanks for joining up. Joining, uh, made it this far. You probably subscribed, but go ahead and press the like button for me. I, I like seeing punch that notification bell. Punch it, smash it. <laughs> Give it the rock bottom. <laughs> Until next time. Hey, by the way, what does redacted mean?